Jetzt lernen Sie den zweiten Gründer von NLP kennen, Dr. John Grinder. Grinder ist ursprünglich ein Linguist, also ein Sprachwissenschaftler. Nach einer Station beim Militär und einer Promotion im Fach Linguistik arbeitet er als Professor an der Universität von Kalifornien in Santa Cruz. Dort lernte er Richard Bandler kennen, den zweiten Co-Gründer von NLP. Der Fokus von Grinder liegt auf der Analyse von Noam Chomsky, aber auch von Milton Erickson, insbesondere die Analyse der Sprachpatterns der Erickson'schen Hypnose. Auch Grinder hat zahlreiche Bücher geschrieben, viele davon mit Richard Bandler zusammen. Ich habe hier zwei wieder, in denen John NLP definiert. Was ist für ihn der Kern von NLP? Mm -hmm. There are people around us that we meet on a daily basis as well as sort of famous people, people who have been identified socially as being particularly adept and excellent in their performance. Um, NLP is the bridge between either be, being jealous of such people or admiring them. This offers, in, Blair, in Tony Blair's terms, a third way, <laughs> rather than simply admiring uh, or being jealous of such people. It gives you a specific set of strategies to unconsciously assimilate precisely the differences that make a difference between this genius, let's say, and uh, a average performer in the same niche. It is an accelerated learning strategy. It's a mapping of tacit to explicit knowledge. It's a program which allows you to explore one extreme of human behavior, namely excellence. Uh, side comment, I have been astonished since I first learned about this thing called psychology that its focus is on average performance. Um, Bertrand Russell, I remember reading when I was just nine, ten years old, an article called On Education by Bertrand Russell, in which he proposed something that has a great deal of wisdom. The structure of the educational system, even today, 2003, is closely allied with the structure of the industrial work context and that the implicit uh, objective of most mass educational systems is the preparation of the citizen to participate in the workforce. I think we could do it a lot better. I, 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 from my own point of view, we're living in the, la in the age of the accountant, the age of the, of the left brain, and that for historical rebalancing purposes, some a set of strategies, NLP is an example of this set, some set of strategies which restore the recognition of and the active deployment of unconscious processes as an essential ingredient in learning would serve very well to restore some kind of balance. Uh, we are in an age of imbalance at this point in favor of uh, so-called so -called dominant hemisphere. Ah, so, NLP then, in summary, in its heart, in its core activity, is the modeling of excellence, which includes a phase of unconscious assimilation in which you suspend all attempts, conscious processes, all attempts to make meaning out of your experience in favor of registering it with macro or micro muscle movements and imitating the behaviors, which are the behaviors that make the difference between the genius and the average, in parallel context until you can produce in your behavior and evoke from your group the same responses in the same, with the same quality, roughly the same time frame. That's criteria. Until you achieve that criteria, you remain unconscious and imitative. When you achieve that criteria, then click, you switch on all these analytic competencies, all the conscious processes, which you've worked so hard at university and other places to, to develop and uh, you go ahead and do a very powerful and, and, and challenging part of modeling, which is uh, to find an explicit vocabulary, usually sensory grounded, <clears throat> in which you can code what you are now capable of doing behaviorally. So you have two data points, the model, him or herself, or the team, and your own behavior, since you have demonstrated through imitation, you can achieve the same results in the world as your original model. Thank <music> you.